<laughs> okay. Um, all right. Uh, uh, let me see here. Is there are there any particulars in an understandable kind of general way to smooth jazz? Particulars to smooth jazz? Well, I mean, no. Are there? Is there? There's something that kind of defines smooth jazz? Yeah, really bad taste. <laughs> Uh, Larry Carlton plays the big smooth jazz. I know, I know. He's you know your, what? You wish he, you wish he was your father. <laughs> oh yeah, serious. He's my, <laughs> he's God. He's when he's on, he's on. When he's off, he's, <laughs> you know, scary. But no, when he's on, he I've never heard anything so beautiful. Like he really, really, really gets beautiful, beautiful tones out of the guitar. And he just chops out the wazoo. He doesn't. I I love his humility. I, I respect it so much. You know he. At the Crossroads Jet, uh, Guitar Festival, everybody was playing over-the-top guitar. And then along comes Carlton, who plays Josie, and he plays the melody line, the, the vocal line on the guitar. Right? Uh -huh. But when it comes time for the solo, he gives it to the sax player. Is that right? You know, I mean, just, that's so cool, man. It's like he's the most restrained guitar player I ever knew. And, and you know, for me, I, I'm all, all notes. I just play notes all over the place. I have to really hold myself back, mm -hmm. you know. Well... This was, you know, this was kind of on my uh, on my list as well. Though, was chord what chord melody? Finding the melody in the chord. You just mentioned it. Okay. Yeah. Now, an old jazz. Is that an old jazz thing? Is that an old guitar even before jazz? That you play the melody within the chord within chord structure. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, don't you, you know anybody with a little bit of like nosing around yeah but i mean let's say don't you have a version of georgia or something like that yeah that's but that's jazz so the melody is is always within a chord structure yeah let me let me do this let me okay. explain but this is advanced all right yeah okay no yeah you can dumb it down for me as much as I can. Now, I, my my G, my 20 G7 chord system, mm -hmm. I teach how to turn a chord into any chord. Okay. So we're going to do major sixth chords, right? I'm going to do three in, uh, four inversions of a major six. Here's one inversion, two inversion, three inversion, four inversion. Now, mind you, I'm not really advanced at this. Watch Barney Kessel okay. if you want to see the real, real... He's, he's the king. Okay. All right. So now, I have... Now, notice I have four notes. Right. right. But I have to fill them in. I have a couple of different systems for filling in the notes. One is just fill them in. So make a scale. And back to this up here. Right. I can't do it. Right. <laughs> All right, so that's one way, etc. Right. Mm -hmm. Another way is uh, what's the other way? Oh, the actual chord that's built on that scale step. So I'm in the key of G, okay. right? And I want an A note. Well, I have to find the two chord of the key of G, which is where the A is, and it's A minor seven. So I get right. Okay. Then I get a C here. Uh, and then, uh, well, this. And this. So now what I'm doing is, wherever there's a scale step that's missing, I'm filling it in where the chord would have normally landed in that key. Okay. Does Is that making sense? Yeah. Like we have the template, one, two, three, four, five, six, mm -hmm. one, seven. So I have my G, but I don't have the two chord in there for the melody. So I use A minor seven. Okay. I go back to my G. Right? Okay. Now here we don't we're missing a scale tone here, so I play a C6. Mm -hmm. Right? Then I go back to my one that has the note, and this one, these are all regular, and then I have to fill in with this scale step, which is minor seven flat five chord. Oh, and man. finally back to my home chord which I cannot do on acoustic. I'm kind of proud today because I've made Mr. Vinicaggi, I don't know, kind of think, of, think about stuff. Yeah, you made me think. I hate that. 
Um, maybe I don't understand much of it, but <laughs> I, the thing is, when I made him scratch his little chin, it's kind of good. All right, now, the third system is a real cheat. It's a real great cheat. It's the diminished seventh chord system. A diminished seventh chord can be virtually put anywhere. All right. Really? The diminished seventh looks like this. It's kind of like two dominant seventh chords at, in one. Okay. So it's very, very complex. Okay. All right, so I get this now. Here's my filler. Why do you call this sort of cheating? What do I what? You call this sort of cheating, the, the third, this third method or whatever. That's not really. It, it's just that uh, it's, it's an easy fix for the problem. Oh, it is. Okay. You know? Easier than the previous two ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And diminished seventh chords are a hoot, as are, are augmented chords. Like people, I don't know why guitar players don't take more advantage of this, because it sounds so fancy dancy. But basically, if you take a seventh chord, now what I'm going to do is take the top of it, instead of this, I'm doing this, okay. and then I'm going to raise the root a half step. That chord can replace this one, alright? This is a B7, this is a C diminished 7. Okay, play the B7. Now listen to the resolution. Okay, now here's what the diminished 7. Okay. Right, both nice, right? Yeah. Now when I do Georgia, Got a major chord here, do a little diddling, right? Then my B7, and now I take my substitution to the seventh. All right, Man. what the hell is that? You know? <laughs> yeah. But you know what happens? The minus seventh chords are really cool on guitar, because you know, so if I go G7 in this inversion, the G7 in this inversion, they're two different fingerings, right? Uh -huh. But if I go G diminished seventh in this inversion, and all I have, and I go up here, it's the same exact four notes oh, okay. without changing the shape. So, so I it's have movable. Yeah. I have four different placements of the diminished seventh cycle, and, and now I'm using a diminished scale with it. All right, so it's all this fancy dancy crap. Well, is there a type of music that's used in more often, more often than others? Why does it sound like sort of old-timey? Oh, the, the tension music and silent movement? Well, I, okay, that, that's one I, right. hadn't, I hadn't thought of, but, but uh, I was thinking of stuff that actually was maybe more, more happy or whatever. Maybe I was thinking of barbershop or something like that, I don't know. Well, uh, well you know, these are, these are, the way you're thinking of barbershop is that, first of all, in Georgia, in Georgia, I might have to close the window if these guys are going to keep doing this. Uh, the B7 chord is what we talked about, a secondary dominant chord. That's your barbershop quartet sound. Oh, okay. All right. If I, if I resolve to an E7, you'd hear it. Oh, right. All right, so that's where you're hearing that. Okay. All right. I was Now, also, augmented chords. Augmented, here's a triad, a G chord, in the F shape. And I'm G, B, D, G. That's basic. It comes off of this big bar. Right. Now what you do with this is there's one fifth in it right here. You raise it a half step. Now in this in the case of diminished seventh, you go step and a half to get the repeat of the chord. In the case of augmented, you go two whole steps. Okay. Okay. For camera, just for repeat that both of those again, please. All right, for diminished seventh chord, you take the shape and, and move it a step, a whole step and a, a half whole, step. A whole step and a half. These are the same four notes. When you do it four times, when you come back to the fifth, it repeats the very first inversion. Okay, all right. All right, so far so good? Yeah. Now with augmented chords, see if we looked at a piano, the diminished seventh chord would split all 12 notes into equal quarters. Okay. Okay. Be step and a half, step and a half, step and a half, step and a half. And when you went one more step and a half, you get back to the root note. Okay. All right. What happens with the augmented chord is a similar breaking up, but you break up the 12 notes into thirds rather than quarters. Okay. So you get less, less, you only get three of them. All right. So I go two whole steps and two whole steps. Okay. 
Now let me let me give you the truth about it. All right, I'm going to eliminate one root just to to avoid confusion. Now we have all three notes of the diminished scale. Here's my major chord: root the third, fifth root. I'm raising the fifth, the half step. All right, now the notes are B, E flat, G. Mm -hmm. All right, I go up here. I get. E flat, G, B, same three notes, different mm -hmm. order. Go up here, G, B, E flat. All right, mm -hmm. no change. So now also these chords can substitute it. Like in Georgia, I can either do the C diminished seven, and how I do that is uh, again I take just the essential four notes of the seventh chord and raise the root a half step, and I get that substitution, mm -hmm. diminished seven substitution. All right. Is this all in your in your G seven? Theory as well? Yeah, I, well, I, I, what happens is I give 20 chord graphs to learn all 20 G7s. Right. And by the way, I don't even know them all memorized. Like, you know, like, I saw Barney, I never do the ones in the bass. Oh, okay. All right, there, uh, let me quick. There's the lower fourth, the middle fourth, four, and the upper Top fourth. four, and then there's one skip three. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> That's like one note, skip a note, and then three block together. Okay. And there's one here, and there's one here. So you dampen a note. Oh yeah, you, you only play the notes that your fingers are on. Yeah, okay. Without question. Okay. Right? So basically the way it works is, I'll, I'll show you real quick. Here's a G7 mm -hmm. chord. Okay. And then I say, to turn this into a G minor 7 chord, take the third and lower it a half step. Now, so you have your chart of 20 G7 chords. Mm -hmm. It has shown where the root third, fifth, and seventh are. And then you have a huge set of rules saying, okay, you want to turn this into a 13 flat 5? Uh -huh, okay. You know, uh, uh, you know, raise the fifth a half half step, uh, or, or well, I won't go into it. But but basically, I, I give you a bunch of verbal rules, and you can look it up and go, oh, okay, I can make this one here like this. If you if you knew that system, would you be able to play almost anything? Um, I mean, popular music anyway. Uh, in chord melody? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The whole system is really the idea about it is that you're trying to create chord melody situations. Okay. Right. So, um, <clears throat> sometimes I cheat with chord melody, though, and the cheating is I grab the melody note without actually building a chord. I could go for Georgia, or I could go, uh, let me see, a, a major 7 over there. Um, I could go, but that's too clunky, right? So I just, much more elegant, and plus you hear the ringing of the other notes. Right, exactly, yeah. Uh, same thing here. Now I was going to show you, here is our diminished seventh. But you can also make this B7 uh, a B augmented. Okay, what's the augmented note there? Raise the fifth a half step. Again, here's my B7, all right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to forget about the seventh. Okay. I'm just going to do the triad, and I find it in the top. So instead of this, I get this. Okay. Right. Then I raise the fifth. Now I get that fancy dancy stuff again. Uh. Yeah. All right. If you want to get really nutty, this implies a whole tone scale. Okay. Which sometimes I do. Yeah. Know? There, there are the in-between ones, you here, here, and here, but you have the in-between ones are very dissonant comparatively to the... Yeah. But yeah. that's for effect. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So. That's, that's, you hear that on some TV shows. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, the whole tone scale is cliche and, and uh, sometimes like if you get a harp, Mm -hmm. And you have the harpist play a whole tone scale, oh. and you get like uh, what? What is it? I'm thinking of uh, the, the Disney classic fairy tale, Peter Pan. Mm -hmm. You know, Tinkerbell, I can fly, I can fly. That's a whole tone scale they do. You know. Uh, uh, so, dang the noise. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm <laughs> get a harp to play that in the high register, it sounds like, oh yeah, magic, sure. you know. Sure, sure. 
So, you know, like little tricks that composers use. Oh. You, know. you can hear that a lot, by the way, uh, in the Impressionist period is when they began to explore exotic scales yeah. and, and big fat chord extensions. And Debussy, you can hear a lot of the whole tone scale. That was his kind of trademark thing. Huh. So. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, enough for today. All right. Um, well, that was chock full of <laughs> imponderable <laughs> stuff. It was stumpy.